There are two phrases I hear many students say: "My English is terrible," and "Sorry for my bad English." Be careful, because these phrases are dangerous to your English learning. Why? Because if you constantly describe your English as bad or terrible, you will eventually begin to believe that this is true. The result is that you'll have less confidence in your English, slower progress, and you might even give up completely. The people who are most successful in achieving goals are those who believe they can do it. Even if your English isn't perfect, tell yourself, "I am an English speaker." I'm learning to be fluent, and I'm making good progress. So, how can you say that you're an English learner without using words like bad or terrible? Here are some phrases. Don't say my English is terrible. Instead, say I'm working on improving my English. The focus of this sentence is positive, with the word improving. And it shows that you are actively working on making your English better. Don't say "sorry for my bad English." Instead, say "English isn't my first language, so please excuse any mistakes." This sentence expresses the fact that you're not a native speaker, and requests patience and understanding without using the negative word "bad." To describe your English, if you're talking to someone, don't say "I don't understand." Instead, say "Could you repeat that, please?" or "Could you rephrase that, please?" Asking someone to repeat means you want them to say it again with the same words. Asking someone to rephrase means you want them to say it again with different words. You can also say, "Could you speak a little slower so that I can understand you better?" Again, the focus of the sentence is positive, understand you better, not negative with the word "don't." If you say something and the other person looks confused, don't worry. Maybe they didn't hear you, or they weren't paying attention. Also, maybe they're just not yet accustomed to your accent. To check understanding, say, "Does that make sense?" If the other person says no, then say, "Let me try again," or. Let me clarify, and then repeat your sentence. You can try saying it again using the same words, saying it again using different words, and speaking with more careful pronunciation. Here's an extra tip: keep an English success journal. There's so much to learn that most people focus on their difficulties and all the things they don't know yet. However, you can change your perspective and learn to think more positively with this exercise. Every time you make progress or have some small victory in English, write it down in a notebook. Or in a document on your computer or cell phone. For example, today I learned three new words. Today I practiced listening. Today I understood how to use the present perfect. Today I understood some of the phrases in a song or movie. Today I successfully made a phone call in English. The things can be big or small. The important part is that they show progress and improvement. When you're feeling depressed about your English, or when you don't have much motivation, read your success journal to see all the wonderful progress you've made. It will increase your confidence and encourage you to keep going. 
Thanks for watching English Tips from Espresso English. If you liked this video, please share it.